Indian Muslim man kills Hindu wife for refusing to wear hijab. On September 26th, a Muslim man, Iqbal Muhammad Sheikh, uh, murdered his wife, Rupali uh, Chan Danshive, a 20-year-old Hindu woman, by slitting her throat with a sharp knife and stabbing her hands multiple times for not wearing a burqa as per Islamic traditions and demanding a divorce. According to the reports, the incident happened in the suburban Tilak Nagar area of West Chembur, Mumbai. Iqbal and the victim Rupali had been married for three years since uh, 2019 in a conversion marriage ceremony. Rupali reportedly had to face constant pressure from Iqbal and his family to follow Islamic traditions. Rupali never listened to her husband's and in-laws' demands, which led to a never-ending cycle of domestic abuse. Exhausted from the abuse, Rupali decided to leave her marital house to live separately with her child about six months ago. After a quarrel over the phone, Iqbal hauled Rupali into a nearby alley where he murdered her and fled the scene. Iqbal was arrested under Section 302, murder of the Indian Penal Code, and was taken into police custody for interrogation. So I wanted to cover this because I think this is one of the stories that is essentially closest to a love jihad situation that I've ever heard of, personally. I think... I don't know, Armin, what's your initial reaction to this news? Um, I mean, it's tragic. And also, Sergo in the live chat is saying this is going to feed Hindus for, like, uh, grass and wildfire. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let's let's get to that. Maybe we should discuss that later because the main thing that we have to address is the crime. Because, I mean, we don't want to always, like, just jump on, like, talking about Hindus, even when the when the crime is like, I don't know, this is like an Islamic crime. So we don't want to just mm -hmm, keep pointing exactly. at Hindutva. Yeah, this is, yeah. I mean, we do blame Hindutva for many things, but this is mostly about, let's focus on uh, Islam, the Islamic aspect of this, right? Um, so what's going to be, what's going to happen to him? Is he going to go to jail for life? What's, uh, what's going to happen? You know, off the top of my head, I do not know what the maximum sentencing for IPC 302 is um but yeah i mean i don't even think like that part of the legal process has even kicked in yet i have no idea how long he could go to jail for uh bar is saying yeah that's my depressing news quote for the day cheers everyone and keep up the good work armin and Susanna. well oh, thank sorry. you for the nice note but actually things get a lot better later in the show so yeah I guys around <laughs> yeah i hope yeah um, after this it gets better yeah, well, I think it was interesting for me to see because at first when this was reported like I wasn't with a lot of stuff that comes out of India mm. sometimes it's hard to tell how legitimate it is um, this was her? yes reportedly mm. and I don't know, it's really sad there are lots of reports that their marriage should have been seen as illegitimate anyways because the age of marriage for women is 18 or at the time i think now they raised it to 21 but she, she was 17 years old when they were married anyways um and he is like 16 years older than her or, or something and yeah i think there's a lot of differing accounts about you know basically he wanted her to dress oh, it's 21 people are saying it's 21. Mm -hmm. no what that's what i said at the time said, they they raised the age of marriage for women to 21 recently but she's been married to him for several years at the time it was 18. Mm -hmm. okay. um because before it was 18 for women and 21 for men and then they they changed it to be the same. So they raised the age for women to be 21. Um, and oh, something I don't remember saying she converted anyway. So it's, it's legal for Muslim at 16. This is what's so confusing about Muslim personal law in India or just personal mm -hmm. law in general is that there are all these different standards just depending on what your religion is. So, right reportedly to get married she converted but then after the marriage she didn't want to wear the hijab 
basically. Mm. And that was part of the main contentions in their relationship that led to a lot of very terrible and violent situations until she fled for her life and was like living with a friend and her like her young child. And then they had an argument on the phone. They would frequently have arguments on the phone. And then after the most recent argument, he came to her house and then attacked her. Mm. Um, I want to say something that might be unpopular here. This is as, as horrible and disgusting Islam is. This is not allowed in Islam. Right? So you, this is not like you can't just kill your wife because he, she's not wearing the hijab. Technically, you can't even force her to wear the hijab. There's nothing in Islam that tells you that you could force your wife to wear the hijab. Okay, but you could her. you could say that he is fearing disobedience from his wife, and that is why he's Islamically uh, sanctioned to beat her. Because yeah, she okay, is disobeying right. him. You're right. You're and right, not you're allowing right. him to comply with what is his to protect. You're right. You're right, actually, Susanna. You're very... You're very knowledgeable in Islamic jurisprudence. Um, <laughs> he, yeah, he can't kill her though. Yeah, he can just he can just beat her, and technically, yeah, yeah. He, so the beating is allowed, the killing is not allowed in, in mm -hmm. Islamically. Yeah, in that sense, yeah. it probably falls more into an honor honor culture situation because then it's after yeah, she Islam was is fighting, still she was fighting for a divorce. And that's when this happened. Islam is still responsible for this crime, even if this is not Islamically allowed, right? Mm -hmm. This is how it works. Like we are, um, just because we're saying this is not allowed in Islam, it doesn't mean Islam is not responsible. For example, and I always use this example, in Christianity, uh, child molestation is not allowed in Christianity, okay? But Christianity is responsible for a lot of child molestation. You know, it, it's not as direct as you think. It's not like, here's the text. Here's what people do. It's not a one-on-one -on -one correlation. It's the net effect of the impact of certain values that Christianity or Islam have on a society and the way that they present themselves or um, manifest is different sometimes from the actual text. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think this is important to cover because, like... I don't remember who it was in the chat, but someone basically said like the right wing and the Hindu are going to latch on to this as an example of the kind of thing they're talking about. And this is like technically kind of different from the real love jihad, like great replacement conspiracy theory that kind of is behind the, the broader conspiracies of Muslim, Muslim demographic engineering and tricking and deceiving women, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't necessarily seem like she was deceived. She, you know, apparently converted to fulfill the, um marriage requirements and all this stuff so it's a little bit different than how that narrative typically goes but i think it's important for more left-leaning like liberal people like us to talk about these issues honestly because there will be a lot of left-leaning liberal people who aren't going to talk about this issue honestly they might say oh this was just a one-off incident oh this was just between the two of them oh there's no way that this was influenced by religion blah 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 and i think it's important to be a space coming from the left who can like accurately be honest about some of the ideologies and beliefs that play into things like this happening and not try to whitewash and excuse them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, Jimmy just shared us on Twitch saying, okay, I shared you. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy is trying to help us grow a little bit on Twitch. Thank you. Guys, if you're watching our show, please like while you're watching, you could just hit the share button and just make our channel grow a little bit. Thank you. It doesn't take much and it really helps us grow. So please like mm -hmm. while you're just watching, you're not doing if you're not doing anything else, just hit click the like button and the share button and you know leave a comment or something. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. 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 Sorgu is, is talking about like all the deflections. Like I think it's yes. important to be a voice that doesn't use those deflections and just calls it what it is. Um yeah but then not take it to the level of demonizing everyone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important for us to uh, find what's responsible, what sort of idea is responsible, but also sympathize with the people who are the victims of such ideolo ideologies or such norms and uh, customs. But 
it's hard for for some reason it's hard for people to do that it's hard for people to um, blame the ideology but also sympathize with the people it's just like it's yeah i don't know why it's mm -hmm. so difficult for me. yeah get my best-selling book why there is no god for free click on the link for it in the description